Hey everyone, welcome back. I know that a lot of people like to pick on young people today for being woke and generally out of touch with reality. However, I have to say that I have over time come to genuinely empathize with them a lot. I think it's incredibly difficult to be a young person today, particularly due to the unrelenting and practically inescapable propaganda that they are confronted with on a daily basis. There is a constant brute force war on for their minds in a way that we have seldom historically seen. This isn't, of course, to say that they have the most difficult lives of any past generation. Not at all. I think being a young person who was forced to fight and very often brutally die in World War I or World War II, for example, would have been much worse. However, after World War II, we enjoyed a long period of material prosperity with little or at least much more subtle ideological subversion. Now you can't even walk out your front door without being bombarded with it. I'm going to get into the video further, but before I do, I just want to quickly mention that if you would like to support me, you can best do so on Subscribestar, where I have a private Telegram chat group and private group Discord calls with supporters. I also have an Amazon wish list, which you will find either in the video description or the top pinned comment, or you can pick up a copy of my newest book, Patriots Not Welcome, which is available both in English and in German. And now back to the video. Obviously, the ideological subversion is targeted towards and affects us all. There is a concerted, coordinated effort geared towards convincing us to adopt certain beliefs and to subscribe to particular ideologies. That said, I think the propaganda is much more difficult for young people to navigate. And when I say young people, I mean people from very small children to teenagers to even people in their early 20s. In the past, we relied on adults to tell us the truth, to instill morals and principles in us, and to prepare us for the challenges of life. But a great many young people are being robbed of this privilege today. Very often, adults themselves are the ones bombarding the youth with things like trips to overtly sexualized drag queen story hours, pornographic material in their schools, and the web of confusion that is gender ideology. These adults range from teachers to people that the youth idolize like celebrities, and some sometimes even their own parents. The conditioning is almost inescapable, particularly because so many young people today have access to the internet. They open TikTok, for example, and see dozens of genders and sexualities. They see how people are given special treatment if they adopt these various genders and sexualities. They open Instagram and see either promotions of unhealthy obesity or retouch photos that portray a completely unachievable version of male and female bodies. They open Twitter and see a hostile political divide with the dominant ideology, the left, very often promoting the falsehood that every single right-winger is hateful and evil and every sort of phobic you can imagine. As a consequence, a lot of young people with conservative parents gradually turn against them, tearing families apart, and in some cases, the children even end up denouncing their parents publicly. A very extreme example of this is a video that recently went viral on TikTok of a young girl who publicly denounces her father at his own funeral and despite the gasps of shock heard in the crowd, a portion of the audience actually gives her a round of applause afterwards. But dad, please know that while I'm grateful and highly aware of all that you've given this family, I still don't miss you. When you died, I felt like there was a hole. I missed something, but it wasn't you. It was the idea of what you could become. I miss being able to hope and wish that one day you turn a corner and see the world from my perspective. I miss the idea that one day you might help me fight for the things that matter. I missed my fantasy of you. Because when you died, it solidified the fact that you'll never be what you could have been, but only what you are. And what you are is a racist, misogynistic, xenophobic, Trump-loving, cis-straight white man. That is all you will ever be to me. And dad, before you tell me to respect the dead, please remember that you disrespected and disregarded the lives and deaths of entire communities of people with your ideology. You told me to never back down, so I won't. You know for a fact that even against you, I'm not afraid to share my peace. You are everything I aspire not to be, and I refuse to stand up here and sing the praises of a man who is the paradigm of white supremacy. So I'll take your racist mindset, I'll take your money, and I'll take your advice. And I swear to God I will make this world a better place, not at all because of you, but in exact opposition to you. Look, I obviously don't know what type of father this young girl had, only that she is labeling him with the same sort of buzzwords that we have seen time and time again falsely labeled to pretty much anybody who is remotely right-wing. 
Regardless though, this, this type of behavior, it is deeply sickening. On top of it all, I think a lot of young people don't have too much optimism when it comes to building a life for themselves. Divorce rates are high, high enough that many young men no longer see any sort of value in marriage, not to mention many young men, often referred to as incels, are completely starved of female companionship and many of them have no hope at all of ever getting a girlfriend. Many young men are also forced to exist in an atmosphere that chastises them for being masculine or for things totally outside their control, such as being white. And then of course, there's the economic factor. Few have hope of ever being able to afford the things that were always within reach of their parents and grandparents, such as buying a house. When I was your age, I already owned a house. Yeah, because it cost $6. Your down payment couldn't buy a Frosty at an airport Wendy's today. The last time houses were actually affordable was when college degrees were actually useful. Have you doom scrolled Zillow lately? I don't know if that's the price of a house or if the realtor's cat walked across the computer and sat on the zero key. The only way to own a house now is to patiently wait for Mr. Beast to give you one. By the time I was your age, by the time I'm your age, the sun will have exploded. So who needs a house? For young women, on the other hand, having children, for example, is likened to being given a prison sentence. Instead, girls are encouraged to pursue a career, to be as promiscuous as they want, even going so far as to do sex work on platforms like OnlyFans as soon as they reach the age of 18. It's also becoming increasingly difficult for women to have spaces of their own without these spaces being invaded by men who insist that they are also women. From the makeup world to winning beauty pageants to winning woman of the year, men are dominating what used to be traditional female spaces. You even have men claiming that they can menstruate, that they can get pregnant, they're trying to breastfeed. Some of them even want uterus transplants. Naturally, not every young person falls victim to the propaganda. However, those that don't are often vilified and socially isolated as a result. And it's also not to say that all young people are unhappy. However, according to the CDC, persistent feelings of sadness or hopelessness in teenagers nearly doubled from 2009 to 2021, with an increase of 26% to 44%. There was a time when we used to place a lot of importance on the youth having a right to a period of innocence. Sex, for example, wasn't discussed with them until at least they reached puberty. Now, even very young children are being introduced to sex at events like pride parades or drag queen story hours. Global issues, for example, children didn't need to be burdened with the knowledge of until around high school. Now, from a very young age, children are being traumatized with issues like climate change, being told at home and in their schools that the end is nigh. Adults are to blame, of course. Adults are destroying young people's childhoods because instead of treating them like the children that they are, they are being treated like political projects. It's seriously no wonder that so much of the youth is stressed out, anxious, and depressed. It is for these reasons and many more that I empathize so much with the youth. It's pretty well understood that the young people of today will be the leaders of tomorrow, and that's why you have such a war raging for their minds. The best thing we can do for the young people in our own lives is to give them our love, our time, and our protection. This could translate to limiting their internet access, monitoring the influences in their lives, homeschooling, moving out to the countryside, and so on. Whatever we have to do, because they are worth it. If we don't parent our children, if we don't nurture, advise, support, and and care for the young people closest to us, somebody else certainly will. And what happens when that somebody else turns out to be a negative influence? As the saying goes, the foundation of every state is the education of its children. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Before I go, I just want to give a quick shout out to a fundraiser for a friend of mine, Felix from the YouTube channel Black Pigeon Speaks and Felix Rex. Felix is currently making a documentary called The Winter of Discontent about the economic fallout over the past three years and has set up a fundraiser for his project. If any of you are interested in reading more about the documentary and possibly supporting it, I have linked the fundraiser in the video description. Thank you so much again for watching and I will see you all soon.